Good morning. Welcome back. So we had some uh, long break. Uh, so I, I'm going to continue with the theorem with which we finished last time. So we will see how we can prove. It's a pure analysis, one dimensional analysis. So it's a not big deal. So let me. So we are still doing a quantum Dijkmuller theories. To keep in mind that uh, finally we are doing a quantum topology, right? Even if uh, oh, we study some functions. So the theorem was uh, the following. So the, the Fadier's function, Fadier's quantum dial dive, phi d of x. has the following properties. Uh, so the first property is that uh, it is a unitary function in the sense that uh, when x uh, is real, the values of the function are on the unit circle for any for any x in uh, R. Second property, it uh, satisfies the inversion relation in the sense that if we multiply phi b of x with phi b of minus x, then it is a constant, which is necessarily phi b of 0 squared times uh, pi i x squared. So as a symmetry, we, 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 uh, we have a Gaussian exponential somehow built in into this function, still for any, for any x in R. And the third property is that value at uh, 0, which is a remarkable number pi i over 24 multiplied by something depending on b. And next, uh, so it's uh, uh, enumeration is somehow ad hoc, so don't pay too much attention to that. So phi b of x uh, admits analytic continuation or the analytic continuation. continuation to C as a meromorphic function, meromorphic function with the poles at uh, infinite set uh, given by uh, m plus one half i b plus n plus one half i b inverse uh, where m n non-negative integers uh, z non-negative. And the uh, zeros at minus poles. It's uh, symmetric. And uh, this is clear from, uh, from property 2. So you see when you multiply phi of x by phi minus x, then it is a function where, which nowhere vanishes. So if you hit a pole here, then uh, it means that you hit a zero to cancel each other. And uh, finally, 
uh, asymptotically if I B of x goes to 1 when x goes to minus infinity. OK, so uh, let's see how we can check uh, those properties. And uh, let me start from the last property, proof of uh, 5. So the, this is kind of easiest uh, part. So that's why I, I start from it. So remember that uh, uh, log of phi b uh, was given by an integral e f of uh, z e minus 2i xz dz or along a real line slightly shifted upwards uh, where f of z was uh, 1 over 4z sinh bz sinh b inverse z. Okay, that, uh, that's the formula we derived uh, last time. And uh, to see the property 5, where what we do, we just change the variable to, to a real variable, which means that we have to substitute z equal y plus i epsilon. Right? So I write it integral of a real line now, f of y plus i epsilon, e minus 2 i x y plus i epsilon uh, dy. Now all complex numbers are put into the integrand. Uh, so the, the, uh, path, uh, the, the contour of integration is just a real axis. And now we see that uh, here we can uh, pull out the y-independent part. So it is a e, so the minus 2ix times i epsilon. So minus i times i gives 1. And what remains is a 2x epsilon. Right? And what remains is a f of y plus i epsilon e minus 2i xy dy and the integration along a real line. And now what we can do, we can just estimate the absolute value of phi b of x by using the triangle, uh, uh, triangle inequality for the integral. So this is less than, uh, this is real, right? Epsilon is positive here. Small but positive. Uh, so we have e 2x epsilon. We assume that x is positive. We are going uh, uh, to infinity along the negative uh, real axis. And the integrand uh, is uh, estimated by the absolute value y plus i epsilon. And here we have uh, something of absolute value 1, dy. And uh, that's it, uh, basically, because this part is independent of x now, c of epsilon. And it uh, absolutely converges if you look uh, at the structure of uh, the function f. Uh, because uh, due to epsilon, we don't hit any singularities. At infinity, we have an exponential decay. So this becomes a e to x epsilon uh, c epsilon. And this goes to 0 when x goes to minus infinity because of this uh, exponential factor. But uh, on the other hand, we know that uh, this function is independent of epsilon. And uh, so effectively, uh, uh, we're nevertheless, using this epsilon, it's a Strange fact, right? So it's uh, from one hand side, we know that it's independent of epsilon, but our <coughs> estimate uh, explicitly allows us to make a conclusion. But that's the way it is. So that goes to 0, and the exponential of 0 goes to 1. 
OK, that's uh, property five. And then, and then we continue with three first properties. Proof of uh, one through three. So we, we will do uh, these three parts in one try. And uh, this is a little bit long uh, calculation. But uh, uh, so what we do, we write uh, uh, log of uh, phi b of x uh, in, in uh, three pieces. So we write uh, integral from minus infinity to minus rho f of y uh, e uh, minus 2i x uh, y dy. So you see, what, what I'm doing is the following. So uh, initially, we had uh, this contour of integration. But now I push the contour to the real line using the fact that it is independent on epsilon anyway. So I deform the contour into this one. Minus rho rho. Uh, so I go along. Uh, I go uh, along a real line except the small vicinity of the origin where the singularities show up, actually. And, and then correspondingly, I have uh, three pieces uh, of the integral. So here, I just put epsilon equal to 0. Then I continue with uh, C rho f of z e minus 2i x z dz, and plus integral from uh, rho to plus infinity f of y e minus 2i x y dy. So the, this is a c, c rho. And this part I will denote by uh, j rho of x. Uh, that's the definition. And then. Uh, Uh, so we have uh, j rho of x plus, uh, now I put uh, first and last term uh, together. So here I change the integration variables from y to minus y to make it from uh, plus infinity to rho. But uh, the measure will uh, give me uh, minus sign, right? Because y goes to minus y. But I absorb this minus sign for swapping the limits to putting uh, from rho to plus infinity. And uh, so the neat effect uh, is, uh, uh, is the following. So integral from rho to plus infinity, f of y e on minus 2i xy plus f of minus y e 2i xy dy. And then we use the fact that our function f is an odd function. So uh, this uh, further can be written uh, as an uh, integral from rho to plus infinity, f of y. And here we have a difference uh, of uh, oscillating exponentials, which is uh, imaginary unit times uh, sine of uh, 2xy. So more precisely, it is minus 2i sine of uh, 2xy dy. So I can put uh, minus 2i in front to make it uh, uh, more uh, better looking. And uh, so you see that uh, uh, this is something real now, because it is a real integration of a real valued function. And uh, we got already i in front, 
So we are on the bond, uh, uh, good, uh, on the way of uh, proving uh, property one, right? So, but uh, it remains to see uh, what, what is J row. The, this is a difficult part, uh, most uh, long part of of the calculation. Uh, so, what is uh, uh, what is J row? So we just parameterize z. Uh, so let me put here the change of variable. So z becomes a rho i i phi, and phi runs between uh, pi and uh, zero, right? In the order. Uh, remember that uh, we are here. This is zero. Uh, so. Uh, that's a polar coordinate, angle phi. The length is a rho, so we have this parameterization. And uh, we start from phi equal pi and end up with phi equal zero, right? Because we, we are going this way. So it means that the integral from pi to zero, f uh, of uh, rho e i phi, e, uh, minus 2i x rho e i phi. And the differential of that, rho is constant, e i phi, i times d phi. That's uh, the expression. And uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to calculate this in the limit where when uh, rho goes to 0. But uh, yeah, we should keep, uh, uh, we should be accurate because uh, this part, when rho goes to zero, is divergent. Uh, which means that uh, this part will be as well divergent when rho goes to zero because uh, we cannot have one divergent part, another one convergent, because this will imply that the whole integral is divergent. But the integral was convergent. So if we create it somewhere, uh, diverging part, then we create it uh, same diverging part with minus sign. And uh, so what we uh, uh, do here, now we have to expand uh, here some sinh, couple of sinh functions with a small argument because of rho. So we use uh, uh, the following expansion. So sinh behaves like z minus, no, plus z squared over three, z cube over three factorial, over six, right? Plus uh, O of uh, z five. Everybody agree, is agree, uh, agree with that? So we can pull out one z, one plus z squared over six, plus uh, O of z over, uh, of z four. That's the expression we are going to use. And then, uh, but uh, f contains the inverses of those. So one over sinh of z will be inverse of that. One over z. And then we have, we take an inverse. So up to linear term, inverting is just changing the front sign. So it will be mi one minus z squared over six plus o of z four. Right, that's the uh, expression to be used. And uh, now we, we take uh, f of rho e i phi. It will be one over uh, four times rho e i phi, right? This is a one over z, one over four z, and uh, two sinches. And for two sinches, I, I should take uh, that guy cube. Uh, so we have here z, another uh, couple of z, so it's a uh, power three, right, in front. And then I have to multiply two such things coming from two sinches, which will be just one minus so rho 
E I phi B squared over 6 minus B inverse rho E I phi squared over 6. And plus all of uh, rho 4. Right, so what, uh, that's what we did. And then uh, so what uh, what we get? Uh, J rho of x becomes, uh, so I pull out this i in front, and then uh, uh, we, uh, we expand this. So we should cancel one rho e i phi factor. So it will be 1 over 4 rho e i phi squared. Uh, minus. So uh, then uh, for these two terms, uh, the phi dependent part uh, disappears completely. So what remains is uh, 4 times 6 becomes 24. b squared plus b minus 2. And that's it, right? plus O of rho power uh, uh, 1. And uh, we have to keep the exponential. E minus 2i rho, uh, x rho, uh, e phi. But probably I should expand this exponential. 1 minus 2i x rho e i phi plus uh, let me see which how many terms we have to keep yeah we have to keep two terms plus uh, one, uh, one over two minus two i x rho e i phi squared plus O of rho cube d phi. Integral from 0 to pi, then I put minus in front, right, if I swap the limits. Now, uh, we, we, we have to multiply everything. 0 over phi, 1 over Yeah, so I multiply first by 1. So 1 over 4 rho e i phi squared minus 1 over 24 b squared plus b minus 2. Uh, this I uh, put uh, in the end. OK, so I, o of rho. Then uh, this guy times this will be minus 2 i x 4 rho e i phi. times this, uh, minus uh, 1 over 24 b squared plus b minus 2 minus 2 i x rho e i phi. And finally, this term uh, I will multiply only with the very first one. And, and the rest uh, will be uh, in O term. Uh, so plus 1 over 4 rho e i phi squared. Here, 8 minus 2 i x rho e i phi squared. Plus O of, I guess, rho eventually. So 
So this term uh, gives uh, zero by integration of phi. Uh, the second term gives us uh, uh, minus i pi times minus 1 over 24, so it gives pi i over 24 b squared plus b minus 2. This comes together with this. Uh, yeah, and uh, this guy contributes, right? Minus, uh, so let us put minus i minus i is minus 1, so this sign is negative, minus uh, x over 2 rho uh, e minus i phi d phi, d phi 0 pi. I hope I, I'm correct with the signs. And then uh, this, is, uh, this is O of uh, rho, right? It's proportional to rho. So we put it in here. And uh, this gives a, a quadratic x term. Uh, so it is phi independent. So it will be minus i pi, i pi. And then I have to simplify here, which is uh, uh, minus 4x squared divided by 8 plus O of rho. So I, I check uh, the final, uh, final answer. It will be pi i over 24b squared plus b minus 2 plus pi i over 2 x squared, this one, uh, and uh, plus i x over rho plus o of rho. And as you see, we have a divergent part, uh, inverse of rho. Uh, and uh, it will uh, cancel the divergent part of the integral uh, here. So the neat uh, result is a log of phi b of x. So let me subtract uh, this uh, explicitly known part, minus pi i 24 b squared plus b minus 2 minus pi i over 2 x squared equal Limit when rho goes to zero, i x over rho minus two i integral from rho to infinity, f of y sine of two x y dy. And I, I can put i in front. So effectively, the first part is proven because, uh, as we see here, it's uh, something completely real times i, so imaginary, and here. Everything is imaginary. So for, free, uh, for real x, uh, the phi, log of phi is pure imaginary. So uh, phi of x is, uh, uh, is on the unit circle. But uh, we can put this uh, just a remark. Uh, this can be written as a single integral from rho to infinity. Uh, Uh, this is not uh, very important, but uh, anyway, minus 2 f of y sine of x 2xy. Minus x over 2y squared. So if you integrate uh, this inverse y squared over that limit, you will get this, uh, this term. And, uh, but, uh, but now we, we express everything in, as a one single integral, so we can put uh, here a rho to zero. So uh, this integral now is convergent because uh, the, uh, the uh, divergent behavior at y equals zero is canceled by, by this term and, and the function at the, at the origin is regular now. 
Okay, so we, uh, uh, as, uh, as uh, we see, the, the structure of phi is uh, pretty clear. And uh, even more, this formula implies also uh, two other properties, uh, namely number two and number three. Why? Because if we take uh, log of phi of x and add uh, log of phi of minus x, then this function is odd in x. You see, if you change x to minus x, this function changes its sign. So it cancels out, and we have to just double this part. And uh, we, we get uh, uh, property 2. And simultaneously, if we put x equals 0, this vanishes. This vanishes. We, uh, we end up uh, with this constant term, uh, and uh, we reproduce uh, property 3. And now it remains uh, uh, only the uh, one last property, which is 4. Which is 4, and let me explain. Uh, so this part is essentially goes uh, almost without calculation, but uh, of course there is a calculation uh, in, in a, uh, behind the formula, which I will write. But before we make uh, uh, some estimation uh, of, uh, for the convergence of the our integral, so proof of proof of uh, four. Uh, so first of all, we remark that uh, f of y, when y goes to infinity, plus or minus, uh, behaves like uh, one over y e minus absolute value of y times b plus b inverse. So why it is so? Uh, because uh, two sinh of uh, z when, uh, when z goes to 0, uh, uh, this is a difference of two exponentials. And then uh, uh, depending on uh, what is the sign of the real part of the argument, only one exponential dominates in the limit. So, uh, so let me put it a real variable. Uh, so this behaves like a e absolute value of x. Right? It behaves like this when, uh, when x goes to infinity. <coughs> and then uh, inverse of 2 sinh of x behaves uh, like e minus x. And uh, uh, so this, two, this exponential comes from uh, two, a contri is a contribution from two cinches. Because each cinch is a proportional to b and b inverse correspondingly. So we, we get these two quantities, which are positive, and absolute value of y. And this is just the front uh, 1 over x. Uh, uh, 1 over y, which was uh, present uh, in the definition of f. OK, so we, using this, we conclude that uh, uh, this implies that uh, f of uh, y e minus 2 y uh, z. Now I change uh, x to z. Uh, I want to see how far I can go in complex plane with respect to variable x. Uh, before we used just real x, right? Now we go complex. And then absolute value of this uh, behaves like when uh, y goes to zero, uh, infinity. Uh, where, where, where it goes to? 1 over y absolute value, e. Of course, this thing, b plus b inverse plus two imaginary part of z uh, y. Right? And uh, then the conclusion is that uh, this goes to 0 if imaginary part of z stays bounded by half of this sum. Right, because uh, this is always negative, but the imaginary part of z can be uh, positive or negative. 
But if it is, uh, stays in this uh, strip, then uh, this is weaker than this. So, uh, uh, so we have a, a, a exponential decay at infinity for all complex Z like this. So the conclusion, conclusion is that phi of Z, phi B of Z with complex Z is a holomorphic Oh, maybe let me put it log of phi of b uh, because we are using the integral for uh, expression for the log is holomorphic in the strip in, in this strip. Because uh, in the finite part, our, our, our integral is a holomorphic integral. And uh, 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 this condition implies that at infinity, it is a uh, uh, absolutely convergent, which means that the, our function is holomorphic uh, for all complex Z uh, satisfying this. And this in turn implies that uh, phi B of Z is holomorphic as well. And uh, additionally, because this is an exponential of something holomorphic, it no way vanishes. And, uh, it uh, does not vanish. So that's a good news because if you remember, we uh, 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 for the functional equation to be satisfied, we wanted at least uh, f of z to be holomorphic in, in a strip of width uh, two b. Uh, to be able to translate uh, upward by uh, IB, uh, half of IB and uh, uh, downwards by uh, half of IB, right? So we wanted at least that. Uh, 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 but uh, in reality, our function is holomorphic in a wider strip. And, uh, and, and this width uh, is just enough to make it uh, uh, module invariant. Uh, uh, with respect to BB minus one, uh, does not vanish, and by definition, by definition, uh, it satisfies the functional equation. Uh, phi b of x minus i b half equal e1 plus e2 by b x uh, phi b of x plus i b. And actually, we now see that it satisfies two functional equations because of the symmetry. Right? We can write now that it's a for free as a, as a bonus minus i b inverse half equal e plus e 2 pi b inverse x phi b of x plus i b inverse. And even more, now I can, uh, uh, using this fact of holomorphicity, now I can uh, erase x and uh, put it uh, right z. Because now we can uh, move around uh, real axis, still staying uh, uh, in the region of holomorphicity. And uh, the question, how much we can move around? And uh, it is different for two equations. Because in the first equation, we can move around uh, of width uh, b inverse half, right? So uh, as soon as we stay like this, we just approach the boundary of holomorphicity. While in the second equation, b and b inverse uh, change. So if uh, imaginary part of z is less than b half. OK, so now what we can do with that? But uh, first of all, now we have already obtained the 
the analytic continuation to the whole complex plane. Because uh, uh, we just uh, go outside the strip of holomorphicity by just uh, demanding that this equation is still satisfied. Because we can, uh, 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 you see, if we move z a little bit upwards, this functional equation uh, still uh, is valid. And, but uh, on the upper boundary, we, we can go out, uh, out of the uh, region of holomorphicity. But of course, we can control the singularities which come just from this, uh, from this sum. Because the exponential sometimes can become minus 1. And uh, uh, you, we, will, uh, we will be obtaining as zeros uh, or poles. And uh, so thus, uh, we can uh, analytically continue phi of b of z outside the strip imaginary part of z is less than half of b plus b inverse by using by using uh, this uh, functional equation. And uh, after the break, we will see how, uh, how we can extract uh, uh, the location of uh, zeros and poles uh, just from the functional equations. Yeah, OK, so we, uh, we arrived uh, at uh, a couple of uh, functional equations, which uh, are used to uh, analytically continue our function to the, uh, to the whole complex plane just by declaring that they are satisfied everywhere. And uh, 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 in particular, we can extract now the, the singularities uh, of uh, our function uh, just by looking at uh, those uh, uh, functional equations. So let us uh, uh, locate the first pole. Right? If, you, if you look at property four, then uh, we have a sector of poles. So let me anticipate the location of the poles. Uh, so remember that the poles were declared to be i b times uh, m plus one half plus uh, i b inverse uh, n plus uh, one half. And uh, uh, so if we imagine, just imagine that uh, b is complex because. Uh, if B is real, so it is clear that the poles uh, lo uh, are located along the imaginary axis. But it is uh, uh, nice to, uh, uh, to better visualize them. Uh, it's good to, uh, uh, to attribute to B a small imaginary part. Namely, if we think that B is uh, like this, with, with small theta, then, uh, then as you see, uh, B is a vector like that. Uh, right, uh, with small angle theta, and then B inverse. Uh, let me put uh, here. So uh, this is B. Then B inverse uh, has the same angle, but the negative one. But the length, uh, of course, uh, 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 somehow different. But let us pretend that they have the same length. Say absolute value of B is one then uh, we have uh, B inverse something like this. And then we multiply by I, the both. So which means that we rotate both of them uh, by angle pi over 2. So uh, uh, we get something like IB B, uh, B inverse becomes here. 
and the IB uh, become, uh, becomes uh, here. And then uh, well, we, you know, what we look uh, here, so we start from IB over 2 plus IB inverse over 2. So uh, it's uh, a point here, right, the first pole. And then we go, uh, we go like this. Uh, so just a regular sector uh, of, uh, of, zero, uh, of zeros uh, uh, located at the, at the vertices of that uh, uh, lattice. Uh, but, uh, but in reality, theta should, uh, theta should go to zero, so we have to close this, uh, this sector uh, towards the uh, imaginary axis. In reality, we have this. But, uh, but to visualize the structure of those uh, poles, uh, it's better to keep uh, uh, non-zero uh, non theta, and uh, we see clearly, uh, structurally, it comes from, uh, from uh, shrinking uh, that sector. Okay, and then... So what we expect, uh, we expect the first pole show up right here, corresponding to, to IB over 2 uh, plus IB inverse over 2, exactly on the boundary of, uh, of, the, uh, of the strip of holomorphicity. And indeed, let us see how, how it goes. So uh, what we are going to do now, we are going to move, uh, we can use any of the two equations, but let us uh, choose one. And uh, what we are going to uh, do is to move the z towards the, the boundary of the holomorphicity, which means that we, we move, uh, for example, z upwards uh, uh, the, by the quantity i times b inverse half. Right? Then we will approach the boundary of the holomorphicity. So let us parameterize. Uh, uh, we write z equal my uh, i b inverse 2 plus xi. Right? I introduce new complex variable xi with, uh, uh, for the moment, with imaginary part of xi negative. Right? Uh, if we have imaginary part of xi negative, then we are still in the uh, strip of holomorphicity where we can use the first functional equation. Right? So uh, right in, in uh, uh, functional equation, in, in the first functional equation. So then what we get, we just uh, replace phi b of uh, uh, xi plus i over 2 b inverse minus b equal 1 plus e 2 pi b xi plus i b inverse over 2 phi uh, b of uh, xi plus uh, i b i over 2 b plus b inverse. So uh, looking at this picture, we expect that uh, this function will develop a pole at xi equals 0. And, the, uh, and the, the, the functional equation exactly allow us to, to, conclude, uh, to make this conclusion. So let us simplify first the uh, this elementary part. And uh, what happens here is the following. So uh, look uh, at here. So we have b here, which multiplies b inverse. So they go out. 2 is canceled uh, by uh, 1 over 2 here. So the, the neat effect is that uh, uh, this uh, term contributes e power pi i, which is minus 1. So this becomes uh, 1 minus e 2 pi b xi. So it indeed, uh, uh, when uh, xi goes to 0, this vanishes. And uh, so we, uh, we write it uh, uh, in, the, in the following way, uh, phi b of xi plus i over 2 b plus b inverse is equal phi b of xi plus i over 2 b inverse minus b divided by 1 minus e 2 pi b xi. And if you look at the numerator, when xi is uh, small, we are uh, completely in the uh, domain of holomorphicity in our initial strip. 
where we know uh, not uh, only the fact that the function is holomorphic, but also the fact that it does not vanish there because, uh, because it's the exponential of, uh, of the holomorphic function. And uh, uh, thus, we conclude that uh, we really have a simple pole at xi equals 0. So this behaves uh, like uh, when xi goes to 0, phi b i over 2 b inverse minus b divided by uh, what? 2 pi b xi. So we have a, uh, we, we have a simple pole at uh, xi equals 0. So our uh, uh, domain of holomorphicity is maximum, uh, maximal in, in that sense. Because right on the boundary, we, uh, uh, we already hit the first pole. And uh, for zeros, as I said, uh, we don't, uh, 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 we should not be worried about because of the inversion relation, which makes automatically uh, the zeros to be symmetrically uh, symmetric to the poles. So, uh, which means that simultaneously we, we conclude that uh, our function has a zero at uh, minus this value. Okay, so, uh, and then uh, uh, the rest of the poles is uh, obtained uh, in the following way. Okay, now uh, now uh, define define uh, uh, f m n of xi to be uh, the function phi b of uh, i b m plus i b inverse n uh, plus uh, yeah let me put just one half plus one half plus xi, right? So uh, th this is a, uh, if we manage to show that uh, this function has uh, a pole at xi equals zero, then this is the equivalent uh, to showing that uh, our function uh, phi b has poles at, uh, at the locations we are, uh, we are given in the, in the announcement. Uh, and uh, so let us uh, try to uh, simplify this function by using the functional equation. And uh, for that, uh, we do the following thing. Calculate, calculate uh, the ratio f m n of psi divided by f m minus 1 n of psi. So what is this? So I rewrite the numerator, I B uh, M. So I, I uh, uh, separate this one half in the numerator. Uh, here is a plus. Plus I B inverse N plus one half plus Xi plus I B half. So uh, this half I put uh, uh, in explicit form here yeah, at the end. And now, if we put, uh, uh, replace m by minus 1, then this uh, plus 1 half will become minus 1 half. So we write the same formula, but uh, just uh, changing the sign uh, here. IBM plus IB inverse n plus 1 half plus xi minus IB half. And that's good because uh, this part is the same for the numerator and denominator. And uh, uh, we can use the first functional equation. If you look at the first functional equation and uh, you uh, call this z, then uh, we just uh, write that this is a 1 over 1 plus e 2 pi b times this z, which is the whole uh, uh, line of uh, uh, objects, plus uh, ib inverse 
n plus i b inverse half. And here something uh, remarkable happens. Uh, so, uh, uh, and the remarkable fact is that the dependence on n drops out because uh, b multiplies uh, its inverse. And what remains is 2 pi i times an integer. But e to 2 pi i an integer is 1. So uh, this part uh, can be crossed out. And uh, uh, this thing just change the or, or something is missing here, right? Xi. Uh, uh, this will change the overall sign. So eventually we will have uh, 1 plus uh, uh, minus e 2 pi b xi times e 2 pi i b squared times m. And this I'm going to write uh, in the form of 1 uh, uh, over 1 minus e 2 pi b xi q power m. This is a notation where, where Q is, uh, denotes uh, just this uh, quantity. Uh, and this Q is, uh, stands for uh, Q functions, right? We have a Q deformation in quantum groups and, and so on. And, and this is exactly the Q which, uh, which uh, shows. Remember that uh, 2 pi b squared was h bar, so effectively, Secretly, this is the E i h bar, exactly the, the, the formula uh, expression for, for the Q in Q deformations. So, and, and as you see, we, we start seeing some uh, Q uh, guys already here. Uh, namely, if we define the uh, Q Pochhammer symbol, so uh, if, we, if we define uh, x, semicolon Q M to be a finite product 1 minus X, 1 minus X Q, and so on, up to 1 minus X Q M minus 1. Why M minus 1? Because we want uh, M terms. And uh, we start counting from 0, so we end with M minus 1. So if we define this uh, quantity, which is a very common object entering uh, all these uh, Q deformations, then, uh, then uh, we have, uh, we have uh, 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 the following formula, namely 1 minus X Q M can be written in the following way. 1 uh, Q X semicolon Q uh, M divided by QX semicolon Q M minus 1. Right? Because uh, each term, uh, uh, the numerator and the denominator are pro uh, products which are identical except uh, their last term. Namely, uh, the, the numerator is a, is a denominator times the very last term in the, in the numerator. Which is this? So we, we have uh, uh, this identity for, for object defined the, uh, this way. And uh, then we can uh, write this indeed by, uh, by using uh, this, uh, this last formula. So what is it? It should be the inverse of that. So Q e 2 pi b xi semicolon Q m minus 1 divided by Q e 2 pi b xi semicolon Q m. Okay, and then uh, so the, uh, and this last formula is very good news because uh, remember what we started from. We started from the, the some recurrence uh, ratio, right? We took our function f m n divided by itself at m minus one, and we managed to rewrite it as something depending on m and m minus one. So which means that we can uh, write an identity.
so that we have a, we have a f m n of xi multiplied by q e two pi b xi semicolon q m is equal f uh, m minus one n of xi q e two pi b xi semicolon q m minus one saying differently we have some quantity which depends on m and this quantity is equal to itself where m is replaced by m minus one which means that it is independent of m right so we can uh, go further so this is equal f zero n of xi and, and that's it because uh, because this guy is a uh, 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 x semicolon q sub 0 is 1 by definition. So when we put m equal uh, uh, 1, so the, the, this part is absent. So we have uh, this kind of thing. But remember that uh, our function is modulo symmetric. So we can uh, do the same thing with uh, b replaced by inverse everywhere. So in particular, uh, we have uh, by symmetry, by symmetry in uh, b, b inverse, uh, we also have um, f m n q tilde e 2 pi b inverse xi semicolon q tilde n f of xi equal f m 0 of xi where q tilde is uh, by definition uh, is a q where b inverse uh, replaced by its inverse And now what we do is the following. So I multiply f m of xi q e 2 pi b xi semicolon q m. And I do the same uh, for n. n. And then uh, we can uh, simplify either way, right? Uh, but uh, the, everything is consistent uh, because we are dealing with actual function. The, this is not uh, just abstract un uh, unknowns. These are explicitly defined uh, values of, uh, of a concrete function. And for example, we can use uh, the first identity. So we write f0 n of xi multiplies q tilde e 2 pi b inverse xi semicolon q n. And which is in uh, by the second identity specified at m equals zero, this is equal f zero zero of psi, uh, which is uh, remember now we can uh, come back to the definition. This is the phi b of and now we put everywhere m and n equals zero, which is uh, psi plus i over two b plus b inverse. And, and this is a remarkable guy because uh, you see uh, it develops a pole at xi equal zero as we observed uh, uh, previously. And, and now we can just uh, write uh, fmn, solve it for fmn of xi becomes a uh, phi b of xi plus i over two b plus b inverse divided by q e two pi b Psi semicolon Q uh, M um, times Q tilde E two pi B inverse Psi semicolon Q tilde sub N. And now we clearly see that uh, we have a pole at Psi equals zero. 
because the denominators are regular. When x goes to zero, we, we have just uh, uh, q factorials uh, and uh, q factorial of length m and the q tilde factorial of length uh, n. Uh, and the uh, numerator give, uh, gives a, a pole. So uh, what was the behavior of the, I erased already the numerator. Yeah, so it's a phi b of uh, i over 2 b inverse minus b. Divided by minus 2 pi b xi. That's the behavior of the numerator. And uh, the denominator, we can just put xi equals 0. q q n times q tilde q tilde uh, n. n m and n. And uh, of course, uh, there is a question that uh, are there, maybe there are more poles. But uh, the fact is that uh, there are no any, more, uh, any other poles. So they, this, uh, these are the all poles of the function. Shouldn't there be to buy b plus b minus 1 or something? Where? Yeah, here. No, it came from uh, 1 minus e2 pi b psi, right? So from the expansion of... Here, you mean? No? no? So this way, this what we got uh, on uh, analyzing this guy, right? But of course, implicitly, I am assuming that b uh, is a variable of general uh, generic variable, because uh, if uh, q happens to be a root of unity or q tilde, then uh, it uh, it indicates that we have a, a non-simple pole. And then the, the expansion is more tricky. So uh, uh, the here. Uh, 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 here we assume we assume that uh, b squared is a uh, irrational general number to avoid uh, uh, avoid the zeros of the of uh, q factorials. Okay, that's uh, <laughs> that's the end of the proof of uh, theorem we uh, started from, and uh, now we go quantum. So for, so far, it was uh, just properties of a uh, uh, function, meromorphic function on the complex plane. But uh, I think that now you uh, appreciate the remarkable properties of this function. We, it's a function of which we know uh, a lot, right? We know uh, all the poles uh, and all the zeros, which, is, uh, which happens not often in uh, complex analysis, except for sine functions or cosine, <laughs> or tangent, also, but, uh, which is the same. OK, now uh, the second theorem. Uh, let me put it 10-1. The first one, nine one. So lecture number 10, theorem one. Uh, so the, but this uh, quantum dialogue. Phi B of X satisfies the following five term quantum identity.
phi b of p hat phi b of q hat equal phi b of q hat phi b of p hat plus q hat phi b of p hat. So where p hat, q hat are Heisenberg operators. Q hat are Heisenberg operators satisfying p hat q hat commutator is a one over two pi i. So this is a normalized, uh, normalized no, normalization is uh, is uh, important here, and. Uh, and as a as an operator identity is a absolutely well defined operator identity because the all the terms here are unitary operators. Uh, remember that uh, phi of x uh, takes its values on the unit circle, the property number one. But uh, p and q are self-adjoint operators with spectrum uh, uh, given by the real axis. So, so by the spectral theorem, uh, this, uh, op uh, these are unitary operators. And uh, so this identity just tells us that the product of two unitary operators uh, given here is the same thing as the product of three unitary operators given there. And the proof is a, a difficult functional uh, analysis problem. Uh, and uh, uh, this is why we prove it uh, not completely, but uh, up to a uh, numerical constant. Uh, just uh, and uh, why we do, uh, uh, we do uh, so, because this is simpler. And uh, probably you have noticed already that uh, uh, conjugating things in quantum mechanics are uh, more algebraic and easier to, to do than, uh, than calculating the actual uh, numerical factors uh, in uh, operator equations. And the same is here. And uh, so we, we, prove, uh, we uh, prove this uh, up to uh, an overall a numerical constant. Uh, so, which means that phi b of p, phi uh, b, so uh, there exists a lambda in c, lambda not equal zero, such that phi b of p uh, hat q hat equal lambda and, and the right hand side. But, uh, but in reality, this lambda is equal to one. So uh, what is the idea of the proof? So the uh, idea uh, of the proof. So we have, uh, uh, we define left hand side to be equal phi b of p, phi b of q, and uh, the right hand side, phi b of uh, q, phi b of p plus q, phi b of p, and uh, and uh, we will show show that uh, left hand side conjugates e 2 pi b q same way as the right hand side. And uh, left hand side conjugates minus 2 pi b p, left hand side. Uh, which will be the same as the right-hand side 
conjugates E minus 2 pi B P. And uh, that uh, uh, that's will imply that uh, left-hand side is equal to right-hand side up to numerical constant because by spectral theorem, we can uh, pull this down uh, to, uh, we can translate that uh, conjugation of Q by the left-hand side is the same as a conjugation of Q by the right-hand side. And the conjugation of P by the left-hand side is equal to the conjugation of P by the right-hand side. And by lemma, 7, 1, maybe. Uh, we know that, uh, or by von Neumann, uh, von Neumann uh, uh, Stone von Neumann uh, theorem, uh, this will imply that uh, the operators are proportional. Because uh, now we can multiply left hand side by right hand side, and uh, this uh, combination will commute with Q and P. And the operator. Uh, commuting with P and Q uh, is proportional to identity operator. And then the, the rest is just the exercise on using uh, the functional equation. The only thing we have to be careful about is that on applying functional equation, we stay in the domain of holomorphicity of the function. We, uh, on, a, uh, on conjugating, we don't have a right to go outside uh, uh, and mix up with the poles of the function, or zeros. OK, let, let us see. So let us uh, start from uh, from a left-hand side, conjugating e 2 pi b q. And uh, so we use the explicitly the definition of the left-hand side. And then, uh, we, as you see, we have to conjugate twice uh, the exponential. Remember that these are unitary operators. So in principle, we can put here the Hermitian conjugates. And now, the first thing is uh, simple. So Q commutes with Q. This uh, goes out. And now, what we do is, uh, is we do exactly what we did uh, on deriving the functional equation. So which means that uh, we split this two into two ones. So E pi B Q hat times E pi B Q hat. And uh, these two things, we pull one to the right, another one to the left. So uh, what we do is this, e pi b q. And then we conjugate in the uh, argument of phi b. Uh, likewise, in the second, phi b e pi b q hat, p hat e minus pi b q hat inverse e pi b q. And uh, here we have to be careful because uh, uh, this operation is allowed only if the argument stays in the domain of holomorphicity of our function. And now we use uh, uh, baker campbell hausdorff Baker-Campbell-Hausdorff, e pi b q hat. Phi b, so we expand the uh, first term p hat plus the commutator with minus pi b q uh, of p. So which will be minus pi b i over 2 pi. And uh, the tail is, uh, is trivial, as usual in, in uh, such conjugations. Uh, so pi goes away. And uh, so we uh, do the same with the opposite sign in the second. Uh, so I put just the fraction here, phi b of uh, p hat plus b i over 2, e by b q. So this is essentially the same thing we, we did uh, when we derived the functional equation. And now we see that uh, uh, we are in the position of to apply the functional equation. We are perfectly in the domain of holomorphicity. 
So it's a pi b q hat, 1 plus e 2 pi b p, e pi b q hat. And we can put uh, everything together, uh, 2 pi b q plus e 2 pi b p plus q. So saying differently, uh, uh, we, uh, our operator, as I, I remarked already uh, when we uh, talked about the functional equation, so the unitary operator L, uh, LHS, given by uh, here, solves the spectral problem for this self-adjoint positive operator. Uh, because it, uh, it, uh, the conjugation by this operator brings it to a well-defined uh, positive operator with an explicitly known spectral decomposition. And uh, th that's it. Uh, and, and now we can, uh, we can try to do the same uh, exercise for, for the right-hand side. Uh, but uh, uh, it will be longer. Mm, but not very much, I, I would say. Uh, but let, let us see. Let us try uh, to do now uh, this conjugation for the right-hand side, 2 pi b q hat, uh, right-hand side. And the first thing, uh, uh, so if we look at this, so the, at the first stage, we do the same uh, exercise, right? Because we are going to conjugate by phi b of p, the, the exponential of q, exactly what we did, exactly what we did here. Because this part canceled, so the first stage will, be, uh, uh, will result in this. So I, I write the first two terms here, phi b of q hat, phi b of p hat plus q hat. And now I write uh, this thing, e 2 pi b q hat plus e 2 pi b p hat plus q hat. phi b of p hat plus q hat, inverse. Uh, and one more, phi b of uh, q hat, inverse. And now we, we are trying to conjugate the middle part. And what, the, uh, what is this? So first of all, the second term is easy because p plus q uh, commutes with itself, so it, it is not changed. But the second thing is essentially the same as, uh, as this exercise, but the only difference that p is replaced by p plus q. And, and the Heisenberg algebra is not uh, altered by, by replacement of, uh, of p by p plus q because the, the commutation relation stays intact, right? If you put here p hat plus q. So, uh, so the derivation will not change at all, uh, but uh, we have to be careful. We have to put everywhere where we, uh, we put p hat, p hat plus q hat. So this uh, becomes, uh, now I, I'm uh, uh, writing this part, uh, making this change. So 2 pi b q hat stays the same, but here will be 2p, uh, uh, p hat plus 2q e 2 pi b p hat plus 2, 2 q hat. OK, now uh, uh, what we have uh, else. Um, let me see. Yeah, we can, uh, we can do just directly. Uh, what we do is the following. So, um, no, I, I'm, my impression that uh, we are, sorry, I, I'm missing this term, right? Pi b, p hat plus q hat. Yeah, so uh, it's a three term guy. And, uh, so the conjugation of the first term is trivial because q hat commutes with q hat. Uh, 
but, but the second term has a common factor. 2 pi b p hat is, uh, uh, enters in, in both terms. So we can, uh, uh, we can uh, 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 pull it out uh, in a symmetric way, as we did before. So I write phi b of q hat. So I write here pi b p hat, parenthesis containing something, e pi b p hat, phi b q hat, inverse. And what remains in the parenthesis is a, a two pi b, a four pi b q hat, plus e two pi b q hat. Okay, and no no corrections because everything we do symmetrically. We pull half of the thing to the right, half another half to the left, so everything behaves as a, uh, everything would commute. Uh, you, you remember this uh, uh, trick. Uh, so uh, we are here. And now we, we treat uh, uh, these terms a similar way. We pull these exponentials to the other side of phi. And uh, we will get uh, shifts. And the shifts uh, will be uh, of opposite sign. Because uh, uh, you, see, you see here, we, have a, we had phi b of p and 2 pi b q here. And now we have an opposite situation. We have a phi b of q and 2 pi b p. And when we exchange the roles of p and q, we change the sign of the commutation relation in the Heisenberg. So uh, uh, which means that we use the same functional equation, like here, but with the opposite sign. So the result is a e 2 pi b q hat plus e pi b p. Now in the parenthesis, I use uh, phi b of uh, q plus i b half divided by phi b q hat minus i b half. And of course, we have to, uh, we have to keep uh, this part intact. But I pull out 2 pi b q to make it like uh, 1 plus 2 pi b q hat. And uh, I should uh, uh, not forget to put the pi b p hat in the very end, the, because we, we are pulling this them uh, to, to the left and right. And now uh, we, you see that uh, this uh, is very nice, because now we use the functional equation uh, in the inverted form. So the one, uh, this uh, fraction is equal 1 over 1 plus <coughs> e power 2 pi b q hat which exactly cancels this, uh, uh, this guy in the numerator. And, and so the result is that e 2 pi b q hat plus e pi b p hat, 2 pi b q hat, e pi b p hat. And uh, the, the, it remains just to bring uh, all together. Symmetrically, uh, we end up uh, e 2 pi b q hat plus uh, e 2 pi b p hat plus q hat, which is the exactly same expression as, as we obtained uh, uh, from the conjugation by the left-hand side. So uh, half of the, of the theorem is, uh, is, uh, is proven. And, uh, and a similar exercise uh, you will do yourself uh, for the second uh, half with, uh, uh, with this operator. OK, so uh, if you have uh, questions, uh, please uh, ask. And uh, we will continue uh, next time, uh, next week. No, no questions? Everything is clear, I guess. Okay.